most studies have found that young women with lower self-esteem and or self-worth hook up more often and have more partners than those that have higher self-esteem. Personality. It can also predict a young adult's participation in hooking up. Does anybody have any examples of a personality that more than likely would hook up or engage in risky behavior? Someone said borderline? Anyone else? What was that? Histrionic. Histrionic. Absolutely. A people-pleasing or permissive personality type, or someone that just doesn't know what boundaries looks like, right? Which is including all those personalities that, that were just said. Unrestrictive or, or permissive individuals, when I looked at the research, they were among the most that would take risks, including the hooking up. <coughs> the research has found that parental divorce was associated with the higher likelihood of sexual behavior with a non-romantic partner. More broadly, research suggests that young adults with divorced parents tend to view commitment more skeptically, approach relationships more cautiously, and experience sexual intercourse at an earlier age than those with non-divorced parents. So in saying that, how does it shape a woman's social identity? If we think about who we are today and what has made us who we are today, the same applies to the young adults, young females coming up. It just looks different. If we think about our social class, if we think about if, if we grew up with religion or not having religion, our family structure, was there a two-parent home or was there a one-parent home? And societal pressures, peer pressure, media, one of the major channels of influence is media. So when you think about how that shaped your life, look at how it's shaping the lives of our young people today. But most of us didn't have the internet and all these text messaging and things when we were growing up, right? So one of the major differences from then till today. Hooked up. Oxytocin. It's another neurochemical that is critically important to healthy sex and bonding. It's primarily produced in females, but according to the research we have today, the female body uses oxytocin at four different times. Meaningful or intimate touching with another individual, sexual intercourse, onset of labor in pregnant women, and breastfeeding. So the important thing to recognize here is that the desire to connect is just not an emotional feeling. Bonding is real. It's a powerful connection that cannot be undone without great emotional pain. And many of us also look at the hookup culture through what we call the attachment theory. Attachment theory is basically going back to the family of origin stuff that I mentioned earlier today. What it basically says is if a young person doesn't grow up in an environment that's supported by connection, love, healthy bonding, then they're more than likely to develop what we call an insecure attachment. And an insecure attachment is associated with either anxiety about becoming close to others or avoidance of close relationships altogether. So insecure attachment individuals were more likely to report hooking up than those with secure attachment home base. So what are the expectations before a hookup and after a hookup? Well, most of these young females feel hollow and empty. The next day, hoping the guy will call or text. 